I recently read the book Blitzed. It's about drugs in the Third Reich, in the Nazi regime. And it was extremely interesting because it taught me a lot about the an area of history that I've always been interested in. I've been interested in how people could do the things that they did in the Nazi regime. And drugs in the Third Reich is, is very interesting. I didn't know a lot about the history of the pharmaceutical industry in Germany. And it is absolutely crazy the amount of drugs that were invented in the years um, leading up to World War II in Germany. Things like heroin, things like cocaine, things like even Advil, they, things like methamphetamine, they created all of these drugs that had never been concentrated before. And lots of them were trying, they were trying to create these drugs to become performance enhancing drugs. They have this modern society and they wanted to perform um, better than they could without the drugs. And it made a big difference in the way that things were run in in Germany. So there's this drug called Pervitin. Pervitin is essentially meth that was made pharmaceutical grade in Germany. And, um, and the entire German population, it was more co popular than coffee for them. It was extremely popular. Everybody was taking Pervitin. Everybody was basically on methamphetamines. Um, and the leading up to the, the um, the war, they were extremely against drugs. They said that drugs are bad, but Pervitin was viewed as this, like, there were no bad side effects, less bad side effects than caffeine. Those types of things were obviously that um, ended up not being true. But the the Blitzkrieg, the war, that the, the, really the, the way that Germany had such an upper hand in the war um, that was largely in part due to the way that they were able to use Pervitin. So in order to take over France in the amount of time that they did, the tank drivers had to be able to stay awake for I think like four days straight or something. A very long period of time that would not be possible without some sort of extremely strong stimulant like Pervitin. So they were able to surprise the French and just keep going and keep going and keep going and take over basically all of France in a very, very short period of time. And, it, um, and, and that was not expected given World War I, how long it took to get even just a couple hundred yards with trench warfare. Um, the tanks just rolled through France and, and took over basically the entire what was viewed as the French, um, the best land uh, military, what, what people thought was the best land military in the world in just a couple days. And that was done through the Blitzkrieg method. And that was enabled through Pervitin. Um, so that was extremely interesting. Um so it gave them this like super power in in terms of being able to um, carry out missions for very long periods of time, staying awake. And Hitler had this doctor, and the doctor was um, so Hitler going up to the war. He was extremely anti drug. He didn't do drugs. He didn't do even pervitin. He didn't do anything really. Um, didn't drink but then he started having health issues and he had to be able to perform so he got this doctor who was really pushing the limits and this doctor would inject him all the time with what started to be what started with like multivitamins um, and then 
he started adding hormones in there like testosterone and different hormones and and then he started adding drugs like um every everything like there's a list on that that was published of how many drugs that hitler was taking it was incredible and the amount of hormones that he was taking was incredible this doctor just kept giving him more and more drugs so that he could perform even and give that like extremely powerful persona um throughout the war so um it ended up leading to his downfall because he didn't he just started getting super anxious and and cocooning himself and using drugs instead of facing reality so every time he needed a pick-me-up he would get an injection of all kinds of drugs cocaine was in there often um there was all kinds of opiates in there and there was a famous story of hitler um being extremely exhausted and not even wanting to take a meeting with Mussolini and Mussolini was like I'm gonna get out of the war but the doctor injected him with a mixture of um of a opiate that was kind of like a stimulant as well and testosterone and and the the mixture of um of drugs and Hitler immediately had tons of energy and was able to convince Mussolini to stay in the war. So um, these drugs at first they kind of gave them sort of an advantage and in certain ways it gave Hitler the ability to stay in um, this this mood of extremely confident even if he saw or even if the the country was probably going to lose the war. Um, but then it ended up leading to the downfall because he would get, became extremely addicted to the drugs. He couldn't stop shaking near the end of the war um, because he just he he wanted to be able to constantly be performing at peak and and so he became extremely addicted to drugs, um, which was kind of funny because he started out as this anti-drug policy. He locked up drug users um, so that this is something that was not really written about and not known very much about for a long time and people didn't really give it any kind of thought in terms of maybe having an impact on the second world war and how the way it was fought and, and what happened but given that basically the german population was very heavily using meth um i think it had a great impact on on everything from the way that the civilians were living to the way that um, the war was fought and how it had such a devastating impact at the beginning and the Germans were so effective but then long term they were not able to continue what um, what they started out at and they made some really weird decisions so um, I'm not sure there was there were some questions I, I I would have liked to see any kind of seen impact on like is this something that happened in the did the concentration camps did the people running the concentration camps did that kind of enable them to commit these sort of atrocities um, I think it probably had some sort of impact but that doesn't give the Germans or the Nazis any kind of um, excuse for all the terrible things that they did but overall it was a really interesting book and if you're interested in history interested in World War II interested in the history of drugs um, this is an extremely extremely powerful book um, blitzed drugs the history of drugs in the Third Reich and it um, it, it's extremely interesting, so I would highly recommend this book.